The team crossed to the west bank of the Nile and a few hours later stopped to look at a once thriving farming community that had all but been destroyed by encroaching sand, which is now blowing over to the eastern bank of the river Nile into the Jazeera, the agricultural heartland of the Sudan. <laughs> We have witnessed how in several areas the vegetation cover has been removed, usually for use as fuel or building material, leading to the destabilization of the sands. Eventually, the movement of the dunes and their encroachment on agriculture lands have caused many of the irrigation canals in these areas to be filled in with sand. As a result, people had to abandon these fields. In certain areas, whole villages have also been affected and people had to leave their homes. Though Sudan has been plagued with desertification for many years, cyclic episodes of drought over the last four decades has worsened the sand encroachment in this particular area, south of Khartoum. The actual process of desertification in Sudan remains debatable. Some scientists say the Sahara is advancing southward, others that increasing population along with mounting numbers of displaced persons from the civil war and ongoing conflict in Darfur is leading to over-exploitation of marginal lands quickly turning it into desert. To see if there was any evidence that might enlighten this debate, the team ventured north of El Abade into the sand dune complex of Barra. We're continuing on. We don't want to get bogged down in the sand. Driving through the active sand dune front, it soon became clear that the claims of local farmers about the sand dunes swallowing our land might well be justified. Kind of glad I brought that shovel now. This village is called uh, Al Hamra Oasis and uh, it's uh, inhabited by the Joabra um, tribe. Located between two monster sand dunes, El Hamra is a fertile oasis that draws its water from deep artesian wells and successfully produces tomatoes, onions, and dates for the local market. But the oasis struggles for its survival. A forest official explains that for the past 30 years, the southward moving sand has forced the village of El Hamara to relocate onto valuable agriculture land. Initially, trees and grass were planted in an effort to stabilize the dunes, but this proved too costly until a better way to control the problem was discovered. The main focus has been on uh, protection um, as opposed to, to planting because planting itself is a um, intensive and costly exercise. So um, protection and raising awareness of the local communities about the need to maintain the rangelands, not to cut down the trees, not to um, overgraze the capacity has really been the, the main thrust of this initiative. The dune stabilization efforts at El Hamra appear to be successful though the scale and speed of sand dune movement in the area needs to be more scientifically measured. Additionally, the team did not find decisive evidence that the Sahara Desert was marching southwards, nor was it able to conclusively determine to what extent desertification was affected by conflict, though certain drivers of desertification, displaced population, and lack of conservation resources were noticeable in the area.